Today, we have Lena Thompson, who after 15 years in a corporate job, quit her six-figure job to find more meaning and fulfillment in her life. She spent a long time looking for answers, but it always felt like she was chasing the next thing, hoping that she would find answers and discover her purpose. Through trial and error, investing in mentoring and coaching, working with clients, and going deeper into human behavior, NLP, and human design, she realized that purpose is not what she does, but who she is. Her passion now is to empower professional women to connect to their purpose and fully step into their full potential in business and in life. So welcome, Lena. It's a pleasure to have you. Hey, and wow, what an introduction. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me, first question, what do you think the premise of purpose is? You know, I, I mean, I don't think purpose is like one thing, right? It's not like a final destination. For me, it's more like a journey, a thing of self-mastery. It's getting to really understand who you are, why you make certain choices, why you behave the way you do, why certain things, people, places trigger you. And it's just that, I guess, journey of integration, self-discovery and, and mastery, because I think we all come here with our unique soul contracts. And it's not something you wake up when you're like, that's it. You know, that's my purpose. I'm just going to live it. It's something you evolve into. Interesting. So do you think that we discover our soul contracts or is it just a process of always uncovering it? What do you think? I think it's different for all of us. Of course, you get like, you know, um, people like, what's his name? Uh, Matthew Mateus, I think. I can't remember his name. This Spanish guy. He yeah. remembers like all of his past life. He's on Gaia. I can't oh, remember wow. his name. But he remembers everything from like Atlantis. He's got, I mean, and he's always been like that since he was a little boy. And of course, wow. you get people like that. Yeah. But it's, it's not, for most of us, we're not like that. You know, right. and some people are like naturally good at something and they kind of fall into a career or a job or a business because they always had this passion for something. But I still think for the vast majority of population, it's something you kind of discover on your journey if you want yeah. to. Of course, not everybody wants to. Of course. And for you, it sounds like you had a long journey of discovery and trying to figure things out and, and learning things. So what did that process look like for you? It's still a process. I mean, it's never ending, you know. Um, I think for me, it was actually just recently, uh, I was working with my coach. I was doing a timeline, timeline, I don't know, timeline collapse training. <laughs> and I just actually realized at the end of it, it was such a big revelation to me that the difference really between being an employee and being entrepreneur, where is our uh, employee is very physical, very linear process. You know, you kind of study, you go to a job and then you, you climb up the ladder. <laughs> so it's very like predetermined, I think, very linear. While um, being an entrepreneur, it's very quantum. It's very spiritual. So that was like a big revelation to me, you know, even though I've been in this for like maybe more than well, two, three years, I guess I'm not a seasoned entrepreneur, but yeah, um, yeah. you always discover something, something new. It's like layers of onion that's peeling, peeling in a deeper thing. You dig within yourself. The more you, like in human design, which I think we may talk later about, the more you like decondition and you like get to the core essence of you, the more you begin to realize you like, oh, how did I never think of that before? Oh my gosh. So I love human design and I've actually had someone on here who also does human design, but what have you learned from it personally? Have you, uh, I know everyone has their, their birth time and then you calculate it. And for those who don't know, um, you know, you get these numbers and, and, uh, different energy places in your body that are open or closed, all these things. But what have you learned from it? I think for me it was, probably relief obviously learning a lot but that sense of relief I felt I'm like oh, I'm not broken <laughs> I'm not stupid there is nothing wrong with me and all of the series of failures I guess you know um, some would call it it actually wasn't a failure it was just me experimenting and I was living according to my true nature wow. in that sense because I always love experimenting right I mean I don't really learn by researching it just bores me to death but I try something and I put it out there. I tried it and it doesn't work and it doesn't work. And I'm like, I keep making mistakes. And I know I used to frustrate. I still frustrate a lot of people. <laughs> but that's a nature thing to me, you know. Whereas before I would try and mold myself to, to fit in somebody else's expectation. Now I'm like, no, actually this is the right way for me to go forward. And also I think understanding about my energy type um, and learning how to work with it as a generator. 
um, mm -hmm. not initiating really, but have that patience and most importantly, faith to know that the right opportunities will come. Wow. So will you tell us about that moment where you went from looking for your purpose to embodying it? What what did that look like for you? It's been a, it's, it's just been a really long, not long, but really intense journey. I think it's constantly investing in myself. You know, it's constantly having mentors or coaches, um, being part of masterminds, and especially in the last few months, like maybe three, four months, I really had a strong urge to just stop doing things. I've always been a big doer, um, taking more actions. And if I didn't see results, I would take even more actions because that's, I think, how a lot of us are conditioned. Well, if you don't get results, you work you want you've got to work harder right and what I actually began to realize that effort doesn't work anymore and in fact mm -hmm. the more effort I was putting in the less results I got but I was too scared to let go I was like what's going to happen if I don't show up for it three right. days you know right. how am I going to grow my business what's going to happen are people still going to remember and how was the money and it was always in the back of my mind and then about three or four weeks ago oh my sorry months ago not weeks I was like that's it I mm -hmm. just have to trust the process I've got to literally uh, embody my generator energy and see what shows up and I've made myself a promise that I actually made a little mantra which I've got on my wall if it doesn't flow let it go <laughs> genius genius oh my gosh well if I had met you two years ago and I told you exactly where you would be today would you have believed that you would be here as you are no I Absolutely not. It was, as I said, you know, I mean, if somebody said to me, I'll be passionate about coaching and speaking, I would think they're crazy. I mean, like speaking, public speaking was one of my biggest fears. And then slowly, I actually began like seeing these visions or these dreams like me and TEDx and it was like TEDx. Mm -hmm. and, and then I saw myself with Dr. Joy on a stage. And then I was like, oh, my, wow. So I went and I created this vision board about a year and a half ago. And I put Dr. Joy there and me next to him. And I put TEDx and I put some other things. And last year I was on a stage with Dr. Joe. <laughs> oh, my gosh. wow. I mean, he didn't know about me. I was behind him, but hey, I was on a stage, right? Oh and now uh, I'm actually this weekend, I'm applying for a TEDx, local TEDx here. <laughs> Congratulations. You can do it. Oh, my gosh. Wow. So, what has like come true besides just being on the stage with Dr. Joe Dispenza? What other things have happened that have been maybe magical or extraordinary or exciting for you? I don't know. I think, you know, there, there is many. I mean, for me, really, my whole journey has been more about discovering who I am. Um, of course, I want my business to thrive and I want other things. But the biggest thing is like, who am I? What is my message? Like, what am, who, how, how can I serve? And I think I've been really so involved with it that um, I then, you know, once, once I started getting clarity on that, it was like how do I get my message out. And this what's been really amazing about this year is just so many opportunities started turning up. You know, there was, I spoke at a um, feminine leadership summit, which was a quite a big corporate event um, organized in Croatia and Serbia. Then I was, I was speaking at the other summit, thought leadership. And those are the opportunities that I never chased. And that's what I think the biggest thing for me was like to stop chasing, even though sometimes the urge still comes because conditioning is so strong. And I'm like, I know the more I surrender, the more things flow. And I have been <laughs> proven right over and over again. Yeah, no, it's definitely hard because we're conditioned to work really hard when we're young. And then when things start to go well, we start to think, oh, no, I don't want to lose it. So I want to work hard, even if we got it through just flow and all of that. It's it's uh, it's a dance of continuous faith and surrender, I think, and just trust. What's your process when you feel stressed out or worried about something? How do you get back to your flow and center? Glass of wine. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Yes. Genius. Everyone. Everyone. <laughs> Self-care. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, okay. Um, I think for me, what really, really helps me a lot now is silence. I mean, I just sit in silent meditations or um, I go through certain process techniques I've learned about the limiting beliefs because whenever I feel stressed, I feel it like really in my jaw and my neck and I know something is coming up. It's the trauma. So whereas before I would literally go and have a glass of wine or I would just maybe go do something, you know, I was always doing something. I, I can't handle this feeling. I have to feel good. I've got to get rid of it. Now yeah. it's more like I just sit with it 
and I allow it to come up and it's just releasing those um, beliefs, those traumas. I think all of us have it, you know, no matter, I mean, I had a great childhood, uh, but I know there was still so much conditioning, so much. And I think the more you become aware of it, the more that surfaces up. And that's why I think when people go on this like spiritual journey or journey of self-discovery, it's not like roses and unicorns, you know, it's not easy because the more you become self-aware, the more it's almost like painful it becomes because everything has to come up and you've got to like, and if it's coming up, you've got to release it somehow, you know, so how do you release it? Um, so for me, it's just been like journaling or meditation or whatever, whatever it is, you know, it depends also if I'm by myself or if I'm with kids, with, if I'm with kids, it's, you know, it's then slightly different, I guess, process. Yeah, definitely. Do you feel like, obviously, so you have kids, right? Yes. Um, so do you feel like because you've done this work, you are a different parent and able to teach them new skills? I feel like I'm, I'm more, I'm more calmer. <laughs> Definitely. I don't get as like angry, you know, like I, I used to, I think anger was one of the suppressed emotions. And then when I was provoked, I really couldn't manage that. Mm -hmm. So I don't shout anymore. And because I understand their human design, I understand how different the energy flows through them and like what my daughter needs is not what my son needs, which makes right. it slightly challenging to parents, yes. <laughs> them. but yes. then it's, it's understanding even how to ask them certain questions and watch their response and their reactions. So it made me definitely more self-aware. Wow. And I'm curious, I'm sure that it will affect them in a positive way because when we're conscious and aware of how we're treating people I feel like they don't take on as much trauma maybe I don't know what do you think I hope so you know I mean definitely there is you, you can't nothing go wrong with with awareness you yeah. know I try to let them make their own choices um, and decide and rather than me making decisions for them um, and it's interesting, you know, like my daughter, she, she also like, she only goes to sleep with meditation. So she's just she's like one girl without it. She's eight. And oh because God. I've been doing this for like four years, three and a four years. So she's grew up with it. My son, he's older, he's 15. So for him, it's not new. He's used to it, but, um, you know, but she's really taken on to it. Wow. That's very cool. I, I wish I did that at eight. <laughs> um, what right. would you say? Oh, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> No, I said, I know, right? I think our lives would have been so much more different, like just so much more self-awareness, self-worth, trust yourselves, and like just knowing who we are as people rather than trying to fit in and hide our uniqueness, you know, and then blame ourselves for being different. I think that's so exciting, though, that a younger generation is already doing meditation and things like that from such a young age. I feel like it shows me that things are evolving, that maybe we as humans are becoming kinder and more aware. And that would just be wonderful, I think. What would you say to someone who is where you were two years ago and they have maybe been in a job and they're feeling lost and burnt out and they know that they haven't been spending their time as they're meant to, but they just don't know how to get started? What would you say to them? I would say you've got to lay your foundations first. So where I went wrong is I literally took my employee mindset <laughs> and I invested all into building funnels. Um, mm -hmm. And I started kind of backwards. I thought, right, if I'm just going to copy the strategies of my mentors and coaches and build funnels and create landing pages and pump so much money into Facebook ads, <laughs> that's it. I've got it. Right. I mean, I still did meditation, but that was I only did a meditation, I think, just to calm myself down and put a tick box. But what was missing is that structure. And what happened actually as a result is that even though my self-awareness, my consciousness evolved, my nervous system wasn't on board. Wow. So I was like operating from very two different levels. And that was the big gap, you know, that's been causing pain and disconnect and the stuckness and the frustration. Wow. So, um, I mean, my advice really to anyone who wants to start a business or they're coming from corporate is to lay those foundations to work on your energy because it's all, as I said, mentioned earlier, you know, employment is a very physical, very linear process. Entrepreneurship is very quantum. It's very spiritual. It's all to do with energetics. Wow. So when you're saying to lay the foundation and you spoke about your nervous system, does that mean that you want to specifically calm your nervous system as the foundation or what would you call the foundation of business? Yes, I think your, your, your nervous system needs to, to be ready. Um, you've got to, you know, you've got to kind of ground into it. You've got to ground into your vision. I would say, like, start with your vision first. 
And don't just like, oh, I want to create like a, I don't know, seven figure business. Why do you want it? You know, who do you want to impact? Uh, how do you want to, where do you want to live? What do you want to wear? But the most important thing, it becomes about your identity. Mm. Like, who do you actually want to be? You know, how would that person of you, how would that version of you with a six, seven figure business, how would she walk? How would she talk? What would she wear? Who would she be hanging out with? And, and start calibrating, start aligning to that version. And that's the work that's required because that's the that version, that's that foundation that's, you can call it higher you, the higher self, whatever. That's the version that then is capable of creating the business sustainably. And I've met a lot of like seven, eight figure earners. I mean, I was either coached by them or was in the same masterminds with them. And, you know, it's, it's amazing how different, how different people reach their success, I guess, differently. They all, a lot of them started with nothing, like half a million, two million pounds in debt, investing in coaching, investing in whatever. And some climbed up a very linear way. And I don't actually know a single person who did that without having a massive health issues. Wow. But the others, they figured out that way of energy, the energetics. And I can promise you they work two, three hours a day, sometimes even less, <laughs> and they're living the, the life. I love that. And I completely understand everything you're saying. I want to clarify this for some people too, because when I started out, I would hear people say, you know, who do you want to be? What do you want it to look like? What will that person be like? And I think a part of me thought, oh, well, that's nice. You know, it's nice to imagine or to think about it. <clears throat> but why is it so important that we actually start becoming that person and and envisioning it and practicing it now you spoke about energy why is that so important uh well because when you say i am right it's like that's your identity and whatever your identity is is that what you attract so when you say i'm stuck i'm frustrated nothing is working um the thoughts and the feelings and emotions you have they all carry energy and it's energy has a vibrational frequency and depending on the energy that you feel that your level of energy that's what you're basically attracted to your life so if let's say you're feeling stuckness you're feeling frustration you will you will actually attract into your experience opportunities that match that level of vibration but now when you align with that version of you who has created the business, who's living in the dream house, she's making the impact in the world, traveling first class. When you even start tapping into that person, that's that energy, you can feel yourself completely shifting. So your energy goes up, your emotions become a lot more positive and you emit different level of vibration. So then you begin to align with opportunities, possibilities that are matched to your feelings. It's a perfect way of explaining it. I love it. It's a perfect way. Um, I feel like that's one part of it, right? Accepting that future. But I think for me, especially, I had to really let go of my past and be willing to get rid of that victim consciousness, right? Um, did you struggle with that at all? Yes, absolutely. And I, I still haven't let go of all of it. You know, um, for me, it's like, as I said, every time, like, even earlier today, I just felt this tension. I'm like, right, what's coming up? And it was again, like, you know, if I haven't created it in the past, I probably won't create it again. I'm like, hang on a second. Why am I going back to the past? What limiting belief is coming up? So then you sit and you pull out. It's like little thorns, you know. You've got to start pulling them out. And then you sit and you rewire it and you rewrite it. Like, what do you choose to believe instead? And then you let go of it. You know, you almost like physically actually take that energy out of your body and you chuck it or do whatever you like with it. And then you reframe it. So um, whereas before, as I said, you know, I will try to suppress it. I'll try to do something that makes me feel good. Now I'm like, okay, this pattern is playing out. So let me rewire that. Let me sit with it. And sometimes it just comes over and over and over. And then you've got to do it over and over and over. Right. Um, and what really has been helping me is also some tapping like EFT. That's also been really helping me. Oh, wow. So let's say someone is feeling sorry for themselves, right? What's something they could do right now that would just kind of release that from their system? Mm. So first of all, don't take any actions when you feel sorry for yourself. Don't just go sit and write a post or, or do something because the energy is just going to be completely wonky behind there. And also my, my suggestion would be just do nothing. Just allow yourself to feel it, you know, because the reason why we feel it is because there's an inner child. I mean, I'm sure we all heard about that expression, inner child, is that little baby who feels unseen or unheard 
or unrecognized, maybe because, you know, you, you dropped like an ice cream and your mom didn't pay your attention. That created a massive trauma in your body, which is now coming up as sadness. So rather than trying to get rid of it, just sit with it. And sometimes it can come up as tears. Other times you can just even journal, you know, what's coming up, the earliest memory. So I find like the earliest memory for me to go into and then just literally sending that memory, just detaching myself, first of all, and then shining a lot of light as much as I can, just drowning in the light. If I can, I mean, I struggle sometimes to visualize. My mind is very busy, but it's fine. You know, I just allow myself to experience that and then keep bringing my mind. And then once I feel that relief, then I know I'm ready to open my eyes and just carry on. And sometimes it's instant. Sometimes it's a little bit of relief and I come back to it, you know, so you just got to play with it. You can tell you've done a lot of work on this. And I love that because I'm the same way. I'm so passionate about doing the work. Um, so tell us about your future visions then, right? You've come this far, but where do you want to be in five years, 10 years? Mm. So, I mean, my vision is to speak on stages. Um, you know, I really want to get onto as many stages as I can. As I've mentioned, I'm applying for TEDx working. I think this week, and I'm just going to put my thoughts into it to see what I even want to talk about. Yeah. Um, and my dream is to speak on stage with Dr. Joe and Greg Braden. I would love to be like, you know, on stages, but speaking, not just like behind them on this time. That was um, one step. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That one is stick done. Um, and then also, you know, I want to actually introduce human design into corporate organizations. Wow. I feel like there is a um, big gap because a lot of people are revaluing their lives. They're asking the big questions like, what's my purpose? Is my purpose in alignment with company goals? Where am I going? Yeah. A lot of people feeling unseen, unfulfilled. So this tool is, I mean, I believe it's like a self awareness on steroids you know and you can never be too self-aware so not and this tool is not necessary to encourage them to quit like what I did but just to right. really understand them who they are and what their purpose um, so I actually partnered up with uh, someone who's in the corporate space and be doing a webinar in June to to corporate companies wow that's incredible yeah. and I think it's very brave as well because in corporate they're not really well versed with all of this so it requires you to be just 100% yourself and put yourself out there. And I think some people will really resonate and others won't be ready for it maybe. Um, but I think that's beautiful. What's the, what's the ultimate goal? Would you like for everyone in corporate to feel fulfilled and be aligned and leave if it's right for them? Or what's the, what's the big goal that you want to create? Um, I think the big goal really is for people to understand themselves and, you know, be, feel connected to themselves connection to yourself I feel like it's without it we can't be free you know because unless you understand who you are you're always going to be you're always going to be victim of some external circumstance and that's not really freedom at least not to me oh yeah what's a what's a recent challenge that you've had that you've overcome or are still working on um I think it's just like plugging out those limiting beliefs <laughs> to be honest you know there's there's always going to be I guess, challenges, um, and also slowing down even more. There's still that addiction to doing this and also to controlling how certain things need to go. So it's just letting go and working on deepening connection to myself, to universals. Um, and it's a big shift, not just in my mind, but also in my energy, in my body, in everything. So it's just constant integration, processing, alignments, and just letting go, letting go, letting go. I think that is so powerful. And I really want everyone to fully see and understand what you mean by letting go, because I do the same thing. But when you say letting go, because that can feel very um, uncomfortable and scary if you're not used to it, right? If you're used to controlling and wanting things to go a certain way, because I'm the same, I was always controlling everything. Um, how do you even go about starting to let go of something? Um, pausing. That's how I started. Uh, I remember about a year and a half, I was sitting in a couch and I had like a long list of things to do. And like my head goes, what are you doing? You're like, you'll never get through stuff. And then all of a sudden I heard that voice and it says, you're laying foundations. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, okay, that's interesting. <laughs> and I mean, it started with like maybe two, three minutes a day. You know, I was already doing a lot of like Dr. Joe meditation and, um, and other meditations, 
but silence was very, very uncomfortable for me. I just couldn't, like, I needed to do something. And I found that the more I practiced just being in stillness and silence or even journaling, especially, like, first thing in the morning and maybe then once during the day, that really started, slow, as I said, slowing me down. And then instead of, like, running around and doing 10 things that day just because I had to do them, I would always get this, like, intuitive impulse, do this or do that. And sometimes it's like it was a hit and miss. You know, I'm not saying it all produced amazing results, but when it did, I'm like, wow, that was amazing. And it's like building a muscle, you know, you just got to keep on going, keep on going and just trusting that voice, even if it makes no sense. But yeah, I mean, sometimes I'm like, I don't, how much more evidence do I need? You know, right. because I'm just about it, right? It's like, have I lost my mind? Like, what am I doing? Yeah. And then something happens, you're like, Okay, universe. <laughs> that, yeah. was, uh, that was the evidence. Thank you. I think it's only natural when most of the world doesn't do this. And so it really means trusting what you're experiencing over everything else. But I love silence. That is like the best way to heal, in my opinion, um, because I think that's really the only time that we're not just taking in from others, but we're actually trying to listen to ourselves and uh, that's when you can hear whatever's going on inside, whatever voices might come, your inner thoughts, something more powerful. That silence is the best advice, honestly. That's the best thing you yeah. can do. Slowing down everything, like just like almost like, you know, just thinking, right, this is what the old version of me would have done. I'm going to do something completely opposite, even if it makes no sense, especially like if somebody you know, generates us. I think for us, it's so important to follow that gut, that cycle, mm -hmm. because it's, yeah, I mean... That's yes. how I make my decisions now and live my life. I try my best at least. I'm a manifesting generator, so I get it. I'm all about the gut too. <laughs> um, if someone is hearing this and they would love to meet you and work with you, what's the best way for them to connect with you after this? Uh, LinkedIn is always good. Um, it's just Lena Thompson or also on Instagram, but LinkedIn is probably the best for me. Beautiful. And what is it that you would want to do with people if they connected with you? What would you help them do? Well, it really depends what the intentions are, you know, like what are they, what are they struggling with? Is it relationship? Is it not being certain about the jobs? Are they stuck in a business? Are they struggling to express themselves? Um, I mean, I always start with a full human design assessment. It's, it's not something I think that will solve all our problems, but it's a really great blueprint. So we create like a roadmap and then you start taking small steps towards wherever it is that you want to go based on your energetics, based on your human design. Beautiful. I love that. And is there anything else that you want to share with everyone today? No, I think I feel, I feel like I've shared enough. So. <laughs> I love it. I love it. That's amazing. No, you really have though. I mean, truly so many amazing things in here, the silence, trusting, healing, you know, really finding your flow rather than trying to push through. I think that is just incredible, incredible advice. And thank you so much for taking the time today to share that with all of us. Thank you so much for having me, Anna. Thank you. Thank you.